my Jesus. S&P 500 program trade by level one. Your wake up call, pal. Go to work. This podcast is brought to you by MasterclassTrader.com. Com. There you can learn professional level trading styles such as trading with depth of market or trading longer term commodity spreads. Check it out. Now, if you're interested in a 20% discount on any of the courses, type in trading with GB as your little discount code thing at the checkout. Trading with GB will get you, well one word, trading with GB will get you 20% off any of the courses. All right, not too bad. Let's get on with it. Okay, in this podcast, we're going to talk about I should call it how to be a fund manager, how to be your own fund manager in only a few clicks per year, some clickbaity title like that. So it, in the last podcast, we were talking about the micro contracts. We talked about um, what they are, uh, micro futures contracts in the uh, S&P, the NASDAQ, the Russell and the Dow Jones. Uh, we talked about how they were great little contracts for spreading relative value trades for scalping strategies, even a bit of swing trading, that type of stuff. Uh, this is point number four I want to make from that uh, discussion about micro contracts. Point number four is how you can use these contracts to be your own fund manager. Now, as a case in point, I thought I'd make this rather practical. I've logged into my uh, funds management account. Now in Australia, we call this uh, superannuation. Uh, around the world, I call it pension funds or retirement accounts or whatever it is. But it's that uh, that amount of money that goes out of your salary into a fund uh, and those fund managers who you never know and never meet and all that stuff, manage your money. And at whatever age you take it out and buy your boat or your Toyota or whatever it is, you know. Uh, so I don't have a heck of a lot of money in superannuation because I've always worked for myself. Uh, and I always forget to deposit money at the end of the year. I have some years and haven't the other. And anyway, um, whatever it is. So um, I'm looking at the marketing material and the report for my fund. Now, what a lot of people don't realize with funds management, they're, they're not all, uh, each fund is not um, necessarily a bunch of traders trying to make the most money they can for, um, uh, for their investors. They're not all Berkshire Hathaways, right? A lot of them, their, their plan, their mandate is to do not much more than to return something very close to a benchmark index. In fact, you'll often hear them talk about not their performance, but how well they performed relative to the index. If they outperformed by, say, 1% or 2%, um, that's their marketing material. Oh, the market was down you know, 12%, but we were only down 10 I mean, so what? You're still down 10 right? Um, but a lot of these funds are essentially their mandate, their rules are that that's what they do. Okay, um, so they're not, a lot of these funds are not a room full of traders uh, trying very hard to come up with the next best trade. They are uh, quite often invested in other, other funds also trying to benchmark uh, against certain indices. So my one I've just opened up, uh, I'll read it to you. The investment objective, the fund aims to achieve returns after cost, but not before fees, whatever that means. I don't know what the difference between a cost and a fee is. Uh, after cost, but before fees that exceed the MSCI world, uh, blah, blah, blah index over a minimum period of three years. And it says minimum time horizon, five years. Yeah. Uh, and um, it's, an, it's a fund that invests, I'm guessing in other funds, uh, and international shares, blah, blah, blah. I'm just reading through it. Uh, Two-thirds of it, 68% is invested in North America, so S&P 500. Its top stocks, its biggest stock held is Amazon. Then there's Microsoft, Unilever, and a few other ones, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and, yeah, so think of it. Two-thirds of my retirement money is invested in what is very close to the S&P 500. Right, so... Remember, as I said, their goal is not to outperform massively. I'm never going to see a year where you know S&P return was 10% and I get a 23% return. That's never going to happen. That's not in their mandate. Their mandate is to outperform. Now, I can tell you it hasn't been outperforming 
because it's got a nice little chart, uh, theoretical, uh, showing a growth of fifty thousand dollars invested since fund inception. Uh, fund in two thousand and seven, it looks like it started, or maybe two thousand six. It's a small chart, and you see this chart that follows uh, the MSCI World Index, and you see their chart, which slowly they diverge, and the difference is, of course, fees. All right, so if they're invested in what is equivalent to the MSCI World Index, whatever shares they are, whatever other funds that are also investing in those shares, uh, then the difference between the ind index performance and the money in my account is fees. Right? So, question for you, or question for us. Could there be a better way of investing for the long term that doesn't involve a shitload of fees, that doesn't involve all of involve one fund investing in other funds and all this kind of stuff. I had a look at their fees, incidentally. Here's another thing. Let me just find it. Uh, here it is. So, they when a managed fund talks about fees, uh, they'll talk about the management expense ratio or management fee. This particular fund calls this one an admin fee. Uh, da, 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 da. I'll read you what the fees are. Right? Admin fee of up to 1.89%. And then it says there's a fee of 1.29%. It doesn't say why. Uh, deducted from the assets of the fund, blah, blah, blah. In addition to that fee, there's another fee uh, based on something else. It will not exceed another... Anyway... Uh, and then there's a sliding scale of fees. So if you have 100,000 in there, you get a fee of 1.29%. And then the next 100,000 is a 1.06% amounts so over 500,000. It's a poorly formatted table, but it looks like it's 0.82%. So the sliding scale, your management fee percentage-wise goes down the more you have invested with them. Fair enough. But there's other things. Other things. So they have another... That's an administration fee, Right. They've got an investment management fee uh, for 0.29% up to 1.53%. They've got a withdrawal fee, $60. They've got a member fee uh, that is up to $81, depending on how you use the product, if you're uh, adding more money or whatever. They've got a contribution fee. Get this. This is a great one. 7.06% to contribute to your fund. To, I'm guessing... I can't see why that doesn't just mean if I want to deposit a few thousand extra bucks in there, they charge me 7% on that. I mean, to me, that sounds outrageous, right? 7% for doing what? Yeah. So, but the interesting thing is, if you look at this, if you think about this, that contribution fee will not be included in their reported performance. See, their reported performance shows me, it says, growth of $50,000 invested since fund inception. That's a theoretical $50,000, right? What if I were putting in $10,000 a year? Well, I'm already, you know, every year I'm, I'm, I'm getting hit with 7% on that 10000 bucks. That's a lot of percent. So... When you hear, when you look at these uh, funds and they say, "Oh, management expense fees only, only you know, uh, eight point eight percent or one point two percent or whatever it is," there are other fees involved here that is not disclosed in their performance, right? So, back to my question: Is there a product out there that can help us invest a lot like a fund that is with a long-term view? invest like a fund but without a seven percent startup fee seven percent you know yes there is guess what it is it's these micro contracts i think they're fantastic for doing this right so here's a theoretical right let's look at uh s p 500 at today's price uh it's well it's not today's price today's saturday but fair enough uh, the contract value for one contract is fourteen thousand four hundred dollars. Right. So if you were to buy one S and P five hundred contract, you have the equivalent of fourteen thousand and change in the top five hundred stocks. Now think of a way a fund might do that. 
they go and buy the buy the stocks, right? They're buying Amazon, Microsoft, Unilever, all those guys. But you don't have to. Your S and P five hundred, that's one transaction. What's it going to cost? A dollar and a bit. You know that's how much online commissions are, right? Dollar and a bit, two dollars, whatever. Even five dollars, it doesn't really matter. But that's a heck of a lot simpler. How many clicks will it take? Open your account, click onto your trading platform, buy one at market. There you go, three clicks. You know, so that will get you exposure of fourteen thousand plus in the stock market at today's prices, right? Now, if you were to do this with the e-mini contract, well, that's $145,000. That's a bigger proposition. That's what makes these micro contracts uh, more useful for a longer term investment strategy. Now, let's say, hypothetical, again, you have 15,000 bucks. You too can become your own fund manager just by investing in one futures contract then rolling it over every quarter. See, like the big contracts, these things expire every quarter. And what these big fund managers do is roll their positions over using futures every quarter as well. In the game, we call it Rolls Week. They do it in fixed interest. They do it in um, they do it in commodities. They do it in equities. It happens as there's a Rolls market, they call it in some markets. But it's essentially just a spread trade. It's a single spread trade. Let's say we're long... Um, the June contract, which we have to roll to the September contract. We sell one June, buy one September. It's a spread trade, right? It takes us out of the June and puts us in September. Every quarter, you'd have to do that in your micro contract to maintain a position equivalent to about $15,000 in the S&P 500. Every quarter, you do that. And what's it going to cost you? A couple of bucks each side. No management expense fee, no 7% entry fee, no other fee that doesn't have a name. You know, no no other transaction fees, nothing hidden. You know what I mean? So if you add that up, even with one contract, I can't see how you can't come out ahead. There's one caveat to that, one little caveat, which could be a big caveat, but as long as you know it. And that is these funds, if you invest directly in Amazon, Microsoft, Unilever, etc., they pay dividends, or some do, you know, and they're generally invested back into the fund. So the performance of your fund generally includes dividends, whereas doing this, whereas a futures contract doesn't include, doesn't pay you dividends. So they're most uh, often benchmarking against an index that ha- that includes dividends. Sometimes they call it a value, total value, total return index, or whatever something to check on your own fund. But that includes dividends. Now, different countries and different sectors have their own average dividend yields. I think in Australia, it's about four and a bit. I think on the S&P 500, it's about four, low 4%. So that's what you'd be missing out on by doing this, but you're also missing out on being charged those fees. So maybe they're offset, I don't know. I couldn't say one's better than the other. But it's certainly a viable alternative, right? Something like if you want to invest in tech stocks, well, tech stocks are not really known for uh, trading, uh, for paying dividends. In fact, I'm going to pause this right now and go and check it out. I'm going to check out the uh, dividend yield on the NASDAQ. Okay, so what I found out, I don't know if this is correct, but this is from a Google, a 2% dividend yield on the NASDAQ 100. That could be right. It could be wrong. I, I don't know. It, it's certainly above zero, but I don't know where it is. It wouldn't be as high as, say, um, the S&P 500 or the, the Dow Jones Index or whatever. So that that's the one thing that you wouldn't get with trading a, a futures strategy um, as a long-term investment relative to investing in the shares itself. Now, if you only have 15, 20,000, that type of thing, then it's very hard to have a diversified portfolio. There are a lot of transaction costs because you have to transact in all those things. Can you imagine if you want to mirror the S&P 500 or the Russell 2000? You'd have 2,000 transactions, right? Well, you wouldn't. You'd probably find the top 100 or so that make up most of it. Nevertheless, 
it's a lot of transactions. It's a whole lot harder to do this with stocks as it, does, as it is futures. That's one of the benefits of futures and probably why they create and probably why they've lasted so long. Right? So uh, the advantage then is you could emulate a long-term equity portfolio just using a couple of micro contracts. If you've got, let's say you do have that $15,000 in your account, you could buy one S&P, you could buy one NASDAQ, you'd be a little bit leveraged on that because the current value of the NASDAQ is about 18,000. But you could do that because the margin's only $1,500, right? That's 10% uh, of what you've got in your account. The NASDAQ would have to drop to almost zero for you to lose that money. You never know what might one day, you know, it's better. Uh, the Russell is worth, uh, what is it, about 6,400. So to invest in 2,000 of small, 2,000 small cap stocks, you're in, you're, your minimum investment is $6,400 plus your fees. You know, you, you still have to set up an account. You'd still have to have some access to a trading platform. A lot of these online brokers will have a, um, uh, some type of cheap and easy um, uh, platform that's either free or cost very little to have access to you pay for data uh, but um, you, you'd sign up for the minimal cost one where uh, all you do is roll over every quarter so um, as uh, September expires you sell your September buy your December you can place that as a spread trade you can do the two transactions separately whatever it is but if you take an approach of I'm not going to be smart with this I'm just going to do it Right, then that's a long-term investment strategy. Don't get caught up in the let, let's make this better kind of thing. If you're just going to mirror the index, you've just got to roll that over every quarter. How to be your own fund manager in just a few clicks per year. You know, I think it's a great thing. And these micros allow you to do that. The big contracts don't because it's too expensive, right? Um, but if you don't like the idea, if you are investing in the long term and you don't like the idea of, say, a managed fund taking out all these fees, then that's a completely viable alternative. I'm not going to say it's a better way because, as I said, it doesn't include dividends, but it doesn't include all those fees either. So you've got to weigh up the pros and cons with it. And furthermore, you, you, know, you may be investing in a fund that is known to outperform very well. You know, there are some good name funds out there. Who knows? But um, that's beside the point. If you're interested in just having exposure to the market long term, then these contracts are a great way to go. Let me do a little sum up of uh, the last, uh, the very last uh, podcast we had, which um, we spoke about the top three uh, ways to, to trade. And that was, or trade these contracts, I should say, trade these micro contracts. And that was uh, the smaller contracts are better for beginners because you're not risking a heck of a lot to get involved in the market. Uh, so, like I said, back uh, in the prop trading world, we used to have new traders on a simulator for, at times it was up to three months. Now, if we had these micro contracts, it would give us more, uh, more options for, to, to, to allow a guy to go live with real money uh, and, and trade in the real market. And then uh, with that, you can start adding spread trading strategies because that, it's not going to cost a lot. It, that, what I mean by cost, it's not going to uh, have that um, value at risk. That it's not going to have a lot of risk in the market to do that. To add strategies, and on point number two, I said uh, we're talking about scalping strategies. Like in um, my uh, Dom Traders Masterclass, we talk about uh, a market making strategy, which is a fantastic way. It's an eye opener for a lot of people. A very easy one to implement on a sim, a, a bit harder in real life unless you have a really small contract. Here are four great contracts you can do that in. Uh, uh, things like averaging into a losing trade. Yeah, I know. I know the books say don't do it, but there are times when it can be done. And if you're smart, you can do it well. I've seen guys do it well. I've done it well at times. I've done it dreadfully at other times. <laughs> but with these contracts, you can do that and not, you know, um, not have to sell your house when things go wrong. Right? Same goes for spreading strategies. So um, in the prop world, you often see uh, prop firms trading 
uh, yield curve. So that gives them a lot of, one of the reasons is that it gives them a lot of spreading and relative value kind of trades. You can do that with these contracts too, and you do it on a small scale. Uh, that stuff that we teach in the, the Dom Trading Masterclass applies to these contracts. I talk a lot about fixed interest contracts, the the fives, the tens, the ultra tens, and the the bond and the ultra bond, the five the five big uh, interest rate markets on the CME. These ones here, you can do the same thing, and you know what? You'd be risking less too. You get on the wrong side of a T bond trade or an ultra bond trade, you're in trouble. You know, so um, with these contracts, you don't risk so much. So. There we've covered four good strata. We've covered these new markets. I hope you can um, go away and have a think about it. Shoot me an email if you've got a question on them or look in, have a look on the CME group page, uh, CME, cmegroup.com. Uh, but we've, we've covered four different ways to approach these markets and I think they're all really viable, great ways to trade. Okay, we're going to wrap it up. Remember, this podcast is brought to you by masterclasstrader.com. Check it out and use the discount code Trading with GB for a 20% discount off the courses on masterclasstrader.com. Until next time, trade well.